Hello, everybody. I'm Toby Gennaro, and uh, I've got a good-looking crowd on this morning, so let's do a sound check real quick. It is a normal part of our routine. Make sure the technology is working all right. If you guys can hear my voice uh, loud and clear, and you can see the current splash screen, it says an advanced strategy for uh, the Euro USD contract. We'll be talking about uh, a tra trading strategy um, that works pretty well for uh, a uh, number of different uh, currencies as well as uh, commodities and um, and futures and, and those kinds of things. If you guys can hear me all right, just let me know via the question box on your screen and uh, kind of give me an electronic high five and we'll be uh, ready to jump into the content and kick things off here pretty soon. <clears throat> Great guys, thanks for doing that. Looks like everything's good. Let me just get the recording started. We'll do a formal introduction for recording purposes and then we'll uh, we'll jump right into the content, okay? Hello, everybody, and welcome. I'm Toby Gennaro, and I'll be your presenter for today. The topic for today is advanced strategies for the Euro USD. So I'm going to be talking through a specific technical trade setup in the charts that you can be uh, that you can use in your trading. Uh, we'll be able to, with this strategy, we'll be able to identify a specific entry point, an exact stop loss, and profit targets by utilizing this kind of a trading strategy. Now, for those of you that are on the live webinar, if you have questions. During the session, you can type those into the question box on your screen. I may be asking you some questions as well, so we'll try to keep this interactive, which always makes it uh, you know, a bit more interesting. And we just need to put up the risk warning and disclaimer as we normally do, just as part of the business. I'll leave this up for about 30 seconds or so. If you guys could just have a quick read through this, make sure you understand. What this is saying in brief is that we provide education only, which means we do not give any financial advice. Trading the markets can be risky. It's not suitable for everyone, and you should seek independent professional advice. Okay. If you guys are all good with that, we'll move on to the last one. And one more disclaimer here from Nadex. This will wrap up the disclaimers. Just have a quick read through this one. It's a short one, and then we'll, uh, we'll get started here. All right, very good. Is everybody uh, everybody good with that? All right, let's get uh, let's get started then. Now, since this webinar is brought to you by Nadex and Trade with Precision, just want to take a couple of minutes here introduce uh, both of these companies. Uh, Trade with Precision was created uh, back in 2006 by uh, by Nick McDonald as a provider of trading education for retail traders. So we're an international team of traders that provide training for some major brands of exchanges and brokers around the globe, and we teamed up with Nadex to bring you some uh, specialized education specifically around their, their products. So Trade with Precision is a company that's run by traders for traders, and we're specialists in trading strategy education. Nadex is uh, actually a derivatives exchange, and they are subject to regulatory oversight by the CFTC. So this is a regulated industry for your protection. Uh, Nadex has been in operation since 2004, but they're part of a much larger derivatives organization known as the IG Group out of London which is one of the largest uh, uh, derivatives groups uh, in the world, actually. Uh, Natix Operations right here out of Chicago, which is the hub of the futures and options market. All contracts we'll be talking about today are cash settled, so there's no risk of you know having a mountain of corn delivered to your front yard, anything like that. Uh, there are over 25 global markets to trade with two very unique contracts, uh, binary options and Natix spreads. And today's webinar, We'll be focused on a trading strategy that you can use to trade these, um, trade some of these spread contracts uh, in binaries as well. Now you'll find the Nadex trading platform available on all of your devices. So whether you're in the office or on the go, you can monitor your positions or place a trade if you desire. Uh, some automated filters exist for identifying trading opportunities simply by searching on the binary price. Uh, within that application. So all devices are fast and secure, flexible features that you would expect from a desktop platform, but now you're just mobile, which is great. You'll find uh, most popular markets available in real time with some customizable chart features, uh, multiple time frames, uh, indicators that, um, that you would normally expect. So just like in the office, you can view your open positions, your working orders, account balances, all that stuff, uh, and all while you're on the go or even just uh, around the house or around the office. 
And for today's agenda, we will be talking uh, you through some advanced technical analysis tools uh, just to show you a technical trade setup uh, that we use on a regular basis. Uh, we'll look at things like uh, trends, uh, multiple time frames, um, things like support and resistance levels, uh, pivot points, Fibonacci levels that are going to help us to determine uh, our trade entry and our stop loss and our uh, profit targets. We'll then go ahead, combine all these technical ingredients to actually form a trade strategy that we can use over and over again uh, in the markets that we're trading. And I'll give you guys another um, uh, webinar plug where we do this uh, live and uh, kind of showing you uh, how to use this strategy in real time on real charts and uh, utilizing the benefits of a fixed risk contract like a Nadex binary or a Nadex spread type contract. Okay. Now in this section, uh, let's go ahead and get into some technical analysis that we use to trade uh, our own money and show you guys some of the key things that we look for technically in the price action. So the typical three uh, trending conditions that we'll find in every chart that we look at uh, right here, I'm gonna go through a little scenario here. In this first example of an uptrend, we can immediately see the chart structure here defined purely by the price action alone. Okay, so at very first glance, we see the price action making successive higher highs and higher lows. Uh, once we identify the predominant trend here, we can begin looking at the individual candles that make up this trend to determine the price predictability. And we want to be looking at the candle sizes to make sure that they're all uh, smaller in size and all um, a relatively small size relative to one another, if that makes sense. And then we have the higher highs, higher lows, higher highs, higher lows, and that determines then the uptrend. If we have some really large candles with long tails, uh, we're really not too interested in that. Um, that doesn't, that tends to symbolize a lot of um, uh, erratic uh, price type action, which we don't want. We want price predictability. In the next example here of this downtrending chart, uh, we can see similar uh, characteristics of successive lower highs and lower lows that comprise every downtrend. Uh, you can also see in the price action here that every time we get um, a larger candle uh, move, uh, something like this, um, it's followed up by you know a snapback rally back into uh, the basically the trend line. And that's why it's important to look for small candles uh, in these types of trends to comprise predictable trends so we can anticipate exiting our position on the larger candles, you know, overextension from uh, the moving averages, which would typically be flowing right along here, right along the trend line. And that's kind of what we're looking for on trend. All right, so we've uh, seen an uptrend, we've seen a downtrend, and then there was no trend. And if our eyes are trained to identify trending chart structures, then we can very quickly determine here that this chart is not trending, but it is actually ranging. So as we can see, there is no clear succession of higher highs or higher lows, or lower lows for that matter. Um, we can see a, a lower low followed by uh, a higher a higher high uh, on a number of occasions. Uh, the difference in these chart structures is going to be very obvious to us, and we can readily identify tradable trending charts, okay? at a first glance as opposed to a ranging chart. Ranging charts are very unpredictable. Uh, we don't want to be utilizing our trading strategies on a ranging type of chart. Okay? <clears throat> okay, so this is where uh, some of the complexity lies in recognizing price action structures and defining a trend. Now when you look across multiple time frames, we can see the obvious trend is down just by taking a step back and seeing the lower highs and the lower lows on the 60 minute daily chart right here. Okay, so it gives you a little better sense for uh, what's happening in, uh, in the overall trend, but uh, don't be fooled by what seems to be a lot of simplicity within a trend. They can get very complex and the key to getting these trends right is to look at multiple time frames in order to get multiple charts in agreement. So when you begin to see the weekly, the daily, the 240, the 60 minute, all trending to the downside, now you know you're in a solid trend and you're looking to sell the rallies. 
But as you may probably uh, already be aware, uh, what happens when these charts are in conflict? Okay, it's not a problem. What you're doing is you're just waiting for the charts to get back into alignment. So the worst thing you can do is to, you know, jump back into a market, try to jump back into a downtrend before actually getting the proper chart structure and the entry signal for a short trade to join uh, an obvious downtrend like this. Well, we, another thing we can do is we can also check the 120 minute time frame, the 240, the 480 charts, in addition to the daily and the 60 minute charts that would fill in everything in between these two charts. So we have a complete series of time frames in agreement. And what this does is this gives us a lot of confidence as technical traders to trust the charts and do what the charts are telling us to do. Now, it doesn't matter what the time frames actually are, such as here, it's a 60 minute and the daily. Remember, it's the trigger chart and the confirmation chart that we're looking for. So we're looking to find our setup on uh, two time frames. Uh, these charts could be in a real situation. They could be the five and the 15 minute chart, could be the 30 and the 60 minute, the one and the two minute chart, uh, the monthly and the weekly. But two side by side time frames uh, just gives us um, a setup on two, uh, on two similar time frames that we're using to, uh, to generate our signals. But uh, don't just limit yourself to two. You want to look across, across a wide range of time frames, get a good confirmation of a valid setup, and, um, and making sure that you're aware of the higher time frame trend because there'll be a lot of uh, good nuances on a higher time frame, like a daily or a weekly chart that will tell you about key levels of support or resistance uh, and those kind of things that we can even use with our lower time frame charts. Okay. The golden rule of support and resistance is a very uh, basic concept. Most of you have probably heard of it at some point previously. We've talked about this on previous webinars as well. When we identify these support and resistance structures, we need to keep them in memory as we look through our charts in order to identify when price is actually retesting these levels, since the exact price level may not be visible on your screen. Uh, you may need to scroll back unless you know, you're using horizontal lines on your charts like um, the ones that I have right here, which uh, doesn't matter where you're at, you're going to be aware of those levels, even though they might have occurred, you know, way back on your price chart. So let's look uh, closer at this chart setup that we have on the screen right now. We have multiple touches establishing our true support and true resistance levels. You'll notice that we're in a consolidation here or a sideways market or a ranging market, as some people would call. And the price action is moving steadily into these various support and resistance levels. Okay, so until the price action uh, tests a, oops, sorry about that. Until the price action um, retests a previous level, uh, then that level responds in uh, the opposite fashion. So the broken support level uh, now becomes resistance. Uh, once the level is retested, uh, the same thing with the Resistance levels here, once they are broken, then they're retested and they become support. So if this was a strong trending chart, uh, then we would uh, easily know uh, where to look for our setups in order to join the trend at a safe, predictable location in the price action. And the one thing that you want to understand about arranging charts um, like this is that at some point, uh, even in an uptrend, a strong uptrend or a strong downtrend, you're going to have these uh, these ranging charts and they're better to think of them as consolidation points it's a point where you know hey price may have been running up for several weeks or several days depending on what time frame we're on <clears throat> and this is really just a the market's taking a breather and it's just consolidating up and down like this and it's getting ready for the next move higher and typically you'll have a couple of put touch points right here that will create a flat level uh, usually two touch points and then you might have three and four and then you'll eventually have a breakout and that will it will continue the uptrend same thing if it was a downtrending market you'd have a couple of touch points down here creating a flat level eventually it would break down uh, through the low and then it would can continue the downtrend so better to think of these instead of ranging markets think of them as um, as consolidating markets or consolidation zones okay now, if you already work with uh, pivot points on your charts, then this will be uh, a good review for you. Uh, it'll look something like this. Each of these uh, dotted lines that you see represents a calculated pivot point 
and you can readily see the day's price action reacting to these various pivot levels. Uh, just keep in mind that there is no guarantee that price will respect any of these levels on any given day. So it is imperative that you couple these pivot levels with some actual historical price action in order to determine clusters of support and resistance. And this way you'll have you know, multiple technical factors all working together to determine valid levels for trading and looking for your strategy setups around these clusters of support and resistance. So again, just one more uh, technical factor to, uh, to add to the mix that you can use in your trading. And so for the most part, as you look at this chart, I mean, all of these pivot levels have been respected at one point or another or multiple times. Uh, so they usually tend to be uh, very good. And uh, usually if, um, if you find that a level is being respected, um, you know, in the morning hours, then usually in the afternoon uh, trading session, um, uh, usually that'll tend to uh, tend to repeat. Or if you're trading a 24 hour futures contract, or something of that nature, um, or a binary or spread, uh, you'll find the same thing. They'll respect these levels over time. So in case this is a monthly chart or a weekly or you know a daily or whatever the case might be. So how do we use Fibonacci retracements as another technical indicator? Well, I think the uh, biggest mistake that people make with Fibonacci's is really just drawing the retracement lines improperly on the chart. <clears throat> okay, the correct way to draw fib retracements are from the swing low to the swing high, uh, like you see right here. So I'd start right here, click, and then draw it all the way up to the top right here, and then that would give me my appropriate retracement level back into that 50-62% uh, retracement. If you do this improperly, then you won't get that sweet spot, that green zone right there, uh, in the correct position on the chart, and then nothing will make sense to you on the price pullback from that level right there. So drawing the lines properly, as I've described, is going to place that golden ratio in that correct position, represents the correct Fibonacci pullback level. <clears throat> and as you can see on this chart, the correct pullback level highlighted right there between 50 and 61.8%, and that represents then what we ca call our buy and sell zone. So this green zone, as illustrated here, represents just uh, basically a sensible buy zone or a sell zone and a reasonable pullback level to get long again uh, this particular uptrend. Now, if this was a downtrend like this one right here, then we'd have uh, this, this is highlighted by a red zone just to simulate the sell. But basically, we're drawing this from, I would start drawing it here from the swing high and draw it all the way down to the swing low. And then that gives us our rally back up into that sell zone. And that's usually where the market sells off again. And then it creates that nice trend line like we see here and a nice trend line like we see there. And these are just basically the stair steps. If you did it here from the high, you'd probably get a 50% pullback right there. And then the next move, 50% and, and so on. And sometimes it'll do that multiple times within a trend. And you guys can start to look for that uh, in your charts. So one way to know uh, if you have drawn um, uh, the Fibonacci retracement correctly is to look at the pullback direction. Uh, the pullback direction um, should be towards the 100% level. If you're, if the market is pulling back and it's pulling back to the 0% level down here, then you've drawn your Fibonacci retracements uh, backwards. Okay, same thing here. The rally is going to be back toward the 100%. Uh, if it's drawing back toward the 0%, then more than likely you drew from the swing low to the swing high as opposed to um, going downward. So you always want to be drawing the fib retracement going in the direction of the trend from high to low in a downtrend and from low to high in an uptrend. So you're always going with that trend line. Okay. All right. So now let's go ahead and uh, try to put everything together here that we've learned. Um, uh, this morning and begin to build a trade idea to see, you know, see kind of what this looks like. You can get it pictured in your mind. <clears throat> now here we have a 60 minute chart on the Euro dollar and now we're getting the third pullback into the buy zone right here. And once again, we uh, draw those fib lines going in the direction of the trend, which is up from the swing low to the swing high. Uh, and that sets up our sweet spot pullback right here between the 50 and the 61.8% level. Uh, we have um, 
that uh, that cluster around the 61.8 level with some price uh, congestion right there, a number of um, resistance or support levels uh, right there uh, that we're looking at. Price drops a little bit below that, and then we get a nice rejection candle off of that. And then our secondary support level is going to be right back here at the 78.6% uh, level. We also have some price um, resistance uh, there as well. And if we were using a stop loss, stop loss in some other markets, we'd be putting our stop loss somewhere behind that 78.6 level. But since we're using a Nadex contract, we don't have to worry about the stop loss because it's built into the contract. Okay. So as you can see, uh, price continues to fall just past that sweet spot of that 50, 61.8%. And that's not a problem. Uh, it starts to bounce just ahead of that 78% level. Um, this is where we get our entry signal uh, with that nice rejection candle right there. And we have a reasonable uh, stop loss location as well, either directly below this candle or below the 78.6 level if we're trading uh, other markets besides Nadex contracts. So we want to be able to utilize uh, and look for, uh, even with Nadex contracts, we want to understand uh, where we would place our stop loss uh, because um, that's going to help us determine our total risk on the trade, and it's also going to help us determine our um, our profit targets. So in other words, if I'm looking to uh, enter at the close of this uh, rejection candle right here, or say enter at the 61.8% um, level, then more than likely what I would do is I would enter at the break of the high of this setup candle right here with my stop uh, below the low, and then that would be my uh, my total risk on the trade. And then for my entry point, I would take that total risk and put my first target right about here. Dump half my position there. That gets my trade to break even. And then more than likely in my last um, profit target, probably be somewhere uh, up around the top up here. Or I could just do standard deviations of of that uh, that total risk scenario. So that's how we're getting. Uh, there's no guesswork here. That's how we're getting to the um, uh to, to the sell point or to our profit target um, along with our entry and then understanding all of our risk, uh, regardless of whether we're using uh, a Nadex contract or any other type of futures contract or uh, stock or anything else like that. It's all, it's all going to be the same. We want to understand our entry, want to understand our stop loss and that those two together determine then how we uh, appoint our profit targets. Okay. Question here from uh, Ernest, uh, do you draw the FIB from a support or resistance area or just recent swing high or swing low? As Yeah, it's just from the recent swing high to the most recent swing low. So an example here, uh, like we have here, we drew it from this uh, swing low to this swing high, and then we're looking for the next pullback into that zone. If the market only you know, pulls back to here and then shoots up, then there, there was no pullback. We'd have to look for the next higher high and then draw it again. So in, in this particular scenario, we could even draw it from this low to this high, and we can actually get a coupling of two Fibonacci retracements to see if some of these 50 and 61 percent from this one line up with the one from this one. And then you can even draw a third one from here all the way up to the top. And when you're drawing multiple fibs, you're always drawing them to a common location, like a common most recent swing high. And you can go back from the previous lows, like there are three previous lows here. So we can draw three Fibonacci retracements all up to this level, and it'll set up three of these zones that potentially would or could overlap each other. And when they do overlap, then that creates like a 50% overlapping with a 61.8% um, or something of that nature uh, starts to align itself with a number of things that we can look at when we're trying to look for a cluster trade, okay? Here's a summary of our trade idea that we've been uh, building over the last couple of slides. I've described the support and resistance clusters. Here's a closer look at the resistance level. Uh, becoming support just ahead of that 78% retracement level, but not far from our original buy zone at that 61.8% uh, level. Uh, we've been able to strengthen a single indicator like a Fibonacci to include additional technical factors that give us confidence that these levels uh, will hold once price approaches. So typically price will approach these levels with a lot of velocity 
And initially it'll seem, you know, rather scary to step into the market at this point. But as you can see, uh, the work is all done prior to price arriving, you know, at this anticipated level. So your nerves should be calm knowing that you're in a strong upward trend because of the price action structure and price is simply just pulling back into a known level that you can trust. And if we're wrong, then we have a backup plan knowing that our stop loss is at an acceptable level. So our entry level on this trade is at uh, the one point, um, really the 1.3430 uh, area or basically right around this red line, our stop loss would be below the 13389 <clears throat> level uh, with our ultimate uh, profit target uh, back at the swing high up here around 135, looking for the market to put in uh, a new high. Let's go to the next slide, see what the uh, Nadex contracts at this point were uh, available to trade relative to this setup. We'll look at the Nadex spreads uh, around our entry cluster level of 134.30 um, going long in the direction of the trend. The first contract uh, that we have right here is just uh, slightly out of the money with a floor of uh, 134.60. Asking price is uh, 134.73 uh, going long, which translates to a 13 pip risk. Second contract with a floor of 133.35. Asking price there is 134.61. There's 126 pips of risk. This contract is more expensive since it's already in the money. And since our ultimate profit target is at 135, both contracts could essentially work out, uh, but we get a much better reward to risk with this first contract with a floor of 134.60. Uh, Basically just, uh, just slightly out of the money. So we'll go with the first contract in the, in the list with an asking price of the 134.73. That means we're risking only 13 pips for a potential profit of 70 pips, depending how fast the market moves relative to the expiration time left. Now, since our trade setup is on the 60 minute chart, it's taken an average of about, <clears throat> you know, five to eight hours for the market to respond to these pullbacks. And you know that because each one of these candles is 60 minutes, it's an hour. So you can just uh, count the candles and that'll give you a pretty good idea of, of how long these pullbacks uh, take. Um, so, you know, the first question we need to ask ourselves is, do we have enough time on this particular contract? At, you know, three hours, which is what this uh, contract has, it's considerably under the historical guidelines of how the Euro USD has performed in the past on this setup. So this may not be the optimal contract to trade, even though we may still profit on it, uh, there may be better opportunities for reward with a contract with a little bit more expiration time to, uh, to handle this. Because this, this uh, pullback took what? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, took 14 hours to pull back. Uh, it may take, you know, five hours like these ones. Once they pull back, they only take one, two, three, four, five hours or five candles to make a new high because you're going with the trend. And so that may be the case here, but it'd be nice to have a little bit more time potentially um, on this on this particular contract. Okay, so hang on, I think I did I miss uh, I think I missed the trade there. So here's where we um, here's where we uh, have our our entry, and then uh, once we uh, joined the trade, the eventual, it went back up and then pulled back down, uh, retested that level and then went back up and actually hit the new high. So, um, so that's how the trade actually worked out in, uh, in real time. Uh, you may be thinking, um, you know, why does this type of a, uh, a cluster trade work out? Uh, here's kind of the method uh, to the madness that I've been talking about, uh, trading with the trend taking the path of least resistance going with the momentum in the market gives us price action predictability and confidence that the trade is at a high probability setup. So have you heard the term, uh, the trend is your friend? You probably have. These trends have the tendency to move in waves of buying and waves of selling momentum. So identifying the turning points within these advancements and retracements gives us a lower risk trading opportunity to capitalize on the trend momentum. And since we're trading in the direction of the predominant trend, 
there is less of a probability to have a sustained move going against the trend. Okay, and that's the whole purpose of the higher highs and the higher lows that we're looking for in these trend setups. So we're anticipating these turns in the price action using the clusters that I've been talking about uh, related to multiple support and resistance levels clustering in that same zone. So these strong clusters within uh, strong trends will often respond like a, a brick wall, if you will, that price can then bounce off of and create trading opportunities for us going with that predominant trend. So we're looking for that FIB retracement zone within that 50, 61.8% clustering with a previous level of price support and resistance, and that's giving us our, our price cluster. <clears throat> uh, finding strong trending charts across multiple time frames to ensure that there is good uh, price momentum and predictability in the market you're interested in trading, and then move down to the lower time frame clusters of support and resistance levels to find that historical price action combined with any pivot points and Fibonacci levels. So as I've stated already, the more clustering you can find within the same price zone, then um, the stronger that zone becomes. The entry then is on the pullback to that cluster level, trading in the direction of the predominant trend, and then the price action at this point uh, may be furious, pulling back into that level. It'll seem scary to enter the trade at that point, but with Nadex contracts, again, you have that built-in stop loss that gives us another advantage point uh, when we're trading this setup. So as we move down to the lower time frames, the four-hour chart is beginning to uh, trend down with lower highs, lower lows. Price has been flirting with this 1.2250 level uh, right here with the blue line. And it's made several uh, closes below this level and is now rallying back to retest that level. <clears throat> On the same chart, when we draw the first uh, FIB retracement, the 50% retracement level clusters with that 122 level. As you can see, our key support level, which when support is broken through and then retested, usually becomes resistance for the next move lower in this downtrending chart. So we have a key level of price congestion. We have a 50% or a 61.8% FIB level overlapping that price level. And this then provides us a very specific entry point as well as a protected stop loss. In case that provides a very good entry point for, for a trade setup. We also spot a weekly pivot point and a daily pivot point in the same area around 122.50 on, uh, on the one hour chart. So do you think we have a few of those items then starting to come together on this particular setup? Yeah, we do. So we have the 50% FIB level coupling with the 122.50 uh, level. Uh, we have the pivot level coming into play. So we've just identified a zone for ourselves that is a very reasonable level for a turning point in this downtrend. And we don't need to worry about stops when trading Nadex contracts because, again, that's built into the contract. But we want to be looking for that key level since it is critical to our trade setup. Okay. And here are the results of that trade setup. Price action uh, didn't stop exactly at that level that we anticipated, but nonetheless, it's still reversed in the zone that we had identified and it continued in the direction of the price action trend to retest the previous low. So at this point, this is an obvious level to take profit on the trade since there could be a significant bounce uh, at this level, which would then nullify our trade profit. Okay, so we'll be using these types of trade setups and price action analysis every Tuesday morning on the Live Market Movers webinar at 11 a.m. Central Standard Time, where we put these strategies into action uh, in live market charts. A uh, great opportunity for you all to see how we deploy these strategies in real market scenarios. Uh, Nadex, again, just making an investment in your success as an investor, and that's why they sponsor events like this today. A couple of different ways for you guys to get in touch with us, phone and email listed here for any questions that you might have, or you can ask me your questions right now, uh, just as you've been doing by utilizing the question box on your screen. Demo accounts also available to provide you some familiarity with the Nadex contracts and what we've been talking about today. For current members, if you'd like to begin trading again, just log into Nadex.com, take advantage of uh, some of our advanced education webinars. We'll talk about more trading strategies, just like the one today. It'll help you to take your trading to the next level. If you're new to Nadex, would like to set up an account with Nadex, just go to, again, nadex.com, 
click on, I believe it's the orange box in the top right of the website, says sign up. Fill in your details there. Someone from Nadex will respond via email to get you started. Uh, before you sign off, uh, there is a short survey upon your exit from the webinar uh, this morning. Please let us know your thoughts there. And I'd like to uh, thank you all for joining us. And this will conclude uh, the webinar for today. Thank you very much. And we'll look forward to talking to you next week.